Hello, welcome to the Eco Dev Stream. Uh, I'm John Kay, designer in Eco, CEO of Strange Loop. To my left, I have Craig, who's a programmer and designer on Eco. And today we're going to be talking about a few things. Uh, we're going to be talking about our uh, 8.0 release, what uh, features are in there, kind of showing you what's, uh, what's the latest. Uh, then we're going to get into the changes coming in 8.1 which is a few weeks out, um, which is mostly improvements and bug fixes and uh, performance improvements. And then we're going to talk about uh, what's happening in the 9.0, get a little teaser of that. Uh, it's still a long ways off for that, but we got some really cool stuff we're building for that. And then we're going to answer questions from uh, the streams here and that we've collected on Discord over the past couple weeks. So yeah, let's take a look. So here is, uh, this is the 8.0 world. Um, <clears throat> and one of the major features we've added in 8.0 is just all these different biomes. So it's kind of a grassland biome here. And every biome's got new plants and new animals in it. Uh, so you see this giant redwood here. This is one of the new trees we've added. And these things are massive. So this is like old growth forest. And if you chop down one of these, it's not really going to grow back in any span of, you know, human time frames. Uh, so these are a massive amount of wood that you get from these, uh, but they come at destruction of the environment that's kind of irreplaceable. So it's kind of a cool new thing we've added that, you know, most of the ecosystem has uh, been pretty capable of regenerating, but there is some specific stuff like these old growth forests that don't really regenerate on any kind of uh, reasonable time frame and we wanted to capture that in the game a lot so these these redwoods do that um, there's kind of other resources we'll plan for that like oil will be something that's uh, not renewable um, <clears throat> and yeah it just kind of gives another another aspect to the, the renewable nature of these ecosystems uh, oh we should go check out that lake we're looking at uh, lake up oh, yeah there we go yeah, so lakes are another uh, feature we've added. So in addition to rivers, we've got these lakes. And these will spawn, you know, in wooded areas or grassland areas. And it's just kind of a nice little spot where you can set up a, a village. But it also provides uh, access to water, uh, specifically fresh water, which uh, is going to be a feature in, in a later version. Uh, and so that works really well with the new pipe system we've added so that you can create, like, uh, sewage systems for your buildings. Uh, and that's one of the main new features in 8.0 also. So if we want to show some of those pipes now. So this is a, a blast furnace rigged up. We can show the pumps. We'll show the like a starting pumps there. We just have debug objects now, but uh, there's two different kinds of pumps. There's mechanical and there's electrical pumps. And so these are all hooked up to a water source, if you can see that. We kind of spawn these in and then they are pumped out and piped into these uh, buildings here. So we can kind of follow, you know, debug fly through the world and see that we hooked up all this plumbing underneath the world uh, to connect these objects. So a lot of objects now will consume liquid and later oil. Uh, so you can see here that it's inputting water at this rate from these, what is it, four different pumps and it's outputting sewage at about the same rate uh, <clears throat> and in addition to the smog that's outputting out the top. So it's another important element to creating these buildings in, in villages is having this sewage system and what I really like about it is that it's a it's kind of a public thing like you have to create it as a group and share it among the village so as an individual it's really difficult to do but as part of a you know, tax-funded government society. It's something that you have a lot more ability to accomplish. Uh, so adding more features like that is a priority for us. Like the things you do in the game should really benefit from taxes and collaboration. And uh, yeah, that's the, definitely a theme of the features we want to add. So what kind of objects do you expect to have? Sewage is like everything? Yeah, um, it kind of depends. Maybe you want to talk about the ones that we've added for it. Yeah, so right now, I guess we've mostly focused on the later game objects. Um, actually, in 8.0, um, we don't have the two different types of pumps, so it was kind of mostly regular, or yeah, mostly just the later game objects. But since we've added the new mechanical and the electrical pump, uh, we can kind of allow that to enter the game a bit earlier. Mm -hmm. So, um, and yeah, so what about like the treatment of sewage? 
Yeah, do you want to show where all that sewage is going? If you can fly into the world, you can see the like different oh. pipes you have set up. Got a oh, spawn down This one's here. underwater. Uh, so, yeah, can you show the like different sewage pipes that are going into it? If you can just yeah. fly under the landscape. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so you can see there's, we have two different pipes. We have the input pipes and the output pipes. Uh, if you just go straight down, you might be able to see both of them. And there we go. And kind of fly back a little bit. So it's <laughs> cool to see them from the side. Can I see? Let me yeah, see. And there we go. So you get a nice look at the plumbing system here. You can see all the gray ones are the input pipes, the copper ones. So you can imagine as you're building these things, you're having to, you know, you don't have to put them underground, but it's a good way to kind of hide them away. So it provides this really interesting different element to building. You got to think about not just where your building's going to go, but how it's going to be rigged up. Um, so I think it, as well as like being an interesting collaborative project, it makes building more interesting too. So you can see that like, for example, here we have the workbench, which is inputting water, outputting sewage. And if we follow that sewage, we see that it's going to this underground water filter. So this water filter here is taking sewage as an input instead of an output and outputting uh, clean water. And if you go over to the status panel, so as it filters that, it builds compost. So you can see this compost block slowly building up as, it's, as water is being filtered. And uh, let me see the... Oh yeah, here's the, the, the compost blocks. And you can actually use these in fertilizer recipes. So you take this pollution and you're able to use it for something useful for your farming. So we see if it's piling up here. I think it's under water here. Yeah, this is a big mound of compost right there. Oh, here it is. Yeah, there we go. Compost blocks. Yep. Yeah, so that's uh, the, the fertilizer system which uh, Craig put together. So how would you use that once you, you have it? So fertilizer right now is um, something that needs to have like a little bit of work on, but uh, currently you can kind of take the compost and you can just process it into fertilizer, which will improve the nutrients of the soil, which is something that gets depleted sort of as you farm. Um, and it's definitely something as far as like compost goes that we want to work it into like a bunch of different things like maybe biofuel stuff like that like there's a lot of different directions we could go with that and i think this is kind of like the first step towards the whole like sewage network and building that out a little bit i love the uh, roots on the <laughs> the giant redwoods that stick out like that yeah. so yeah a ton of work on the art side we've added a ton of different plants and animals to this so lots of new stuff to see there so yeah, um, I kind of want to touch on what we're what's going to come out in this like new update that's coming out in a couple weeks. Sure. Um, I know it's a lot of bug fixes and stuff, but is there anything specific you want to? Uh, it's mainly focused on performance, uh, bug fixes. You know, uh, getting the frame rate up for everything, just optimizing, and it should be quite a bit faster. We're expecting to remove basically all the lag that uh, you would see when you know you're just running a server normally. Is that elk freaked him out? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's just it's just the full focus on polish. So we're we're not planning to add any new features, just fixing bugs, um, <clears throat> and then after that we're going to move on to 9.0 where we'll have some really big features. Um, so at least for 8.1 from the skill side, which is kind of what I worked on. I know there's like a big in 8.0 there's a kind of a pretty big shift in how the skills are implemented, and uh, in 8.1 there's going to be a bunch of changes. Well, not like not massive changes, but like small changes that should make it a little bit more playable as we've gone through and seen kind of the effects of the system. Um, currently, like the self-improvement skill currently provides kind of an excessive bonus. Um, that's being changed pretty significantly. Um, there's a couple of bugs with the system where certain things didn't work properly. Those are being fixed. Um, prior to releasing it, we kind of had like two different competing systems where we had uh, things locked down in some trees and things unlocked in others, just kind of to see which one would do better, uh, which one just had a better gameplay impact. Um, so I think when April 1 comes out, you'll see a little bit more of the recipes locked behind skill levels. So hopefully players will find their specialties a little bit more meaningful again. So for people who haven't played the, the latest update with 8.0, we changed the skill system so that you are, uh, rather than unlocking lots of individual skills inside of a single tree, you're unlocking these kind of larger specialties, which you then level up 
as you go. So you gain specialties from your food and housing, and you get these stars, and then you choose which, uh, which specialties under which professions you want. So here you can see, can you take the logging specialty? Do you have any? Uh, I don't think you have any. Go to the hewing one here. So hewing, I have leveled up to level seven. So you have all these like efficiency bonuses that makes it much better. And then at levels three and six, you get these talent unlocks. So you get to choose between these two, you know, special abilities that you kind of unlock as you go. Um, <clears throat> so another way to kind of customize your character as you go, and that's something we're going to be expanding on these and making them do more stuff. And uh, yeah, really uh, letting you differentiate yourself. Even within a single specialty, you can have you know your kind of sub specialties. So we're going to be keep uh, keep be iterating on the iterating on the new skill system. Uh, looking forward to seeing what what Craig's got in there. And yeah, what's next? Um, so I'm pretty sure people are probably pretty excited to hear about what's going to happen. It, like obviously, this is a lot further in the future, right? Because their next patch is going to be a bunch of bug fixes. But past that, like what we're looking to add. So I know you have a lot of yeah, that, so. yeah. So nine point I've been working on that quite a bit, and it's going to be focused on laws uh, and just kind of civics in general. Uh, so one of the major things we're going to be adding is a constitution. So right now in the game, when you start the game, you already have access to voting and uh, elections, and uh, those work in a very specific way. But with nine point the the community is going to decide how that works. So you'll actually create a constitution that has articles and one of those articles might say this is how an election runs this is how long it takes this is who can vote this is who can veto it this is who can impeach this person uh, so you have a ton of flexibility in setting up government positions like you know the minister of transportation you know all kinds of different things whatever you want to do uh, and letting players really not just participate in a government which is kind of what we've had previous to 9.0, but actually create a government. So uh, this is something that I've been really excited about from the beginning of Eco, and I think it'll uh, it'll really add a new layer to the game. Uh, some of the other things that are going to go along with that are just having elections be a lot more flexible. So rather than just electing a person or a law, you can elect, you can decide what civic actions require elections. So maybe creating a district requires an election of representatives or a certain class of citizens. Um, <clears throat> and you'll have a lot more flexibility in how demographics work. So you can decide, you know, active citizens versus inactive versus people who are minors, who have certain sets of skills, who have certain amount of wealth, and uh, really structure these societies in just infinite ways. So I'm super excited to, to get this one out and see what kind of things players are going to do to it. Um, and another big feature of 9.0 is the, the tax system upgrade. So right now taxes all go into the treasury, which means your government is pretty simple. You just have this one giant lump of money. But with 9.0, you'll be able to create, uh, well, you can already create bank accounts, but you'll be able to divide up where those taxes go into which bank account, you know, which leaders can use it, uh, how can they use it, what can they apply it to. Um, and those bank accounts can be tied to the elected position. So if somebody gets impeached, they lose access immediately to those, those bank accounts that they have. So uh, the system is super flexible and so it's pretty complex. So I also want to put a lot of time into just making it accessible. Like you can, you know, it feels fun to like create this government. It doesn't feel overwhelming. You know, when you're making these interesting decisions with the other people in your server. So yeah, that's kind of a, a brief discussion of it, and we'll have lots more to show over the coming months. Uh, and I'll start, uh, start doing blogs. We have a new Friday blog that we do every week that uh, just talks about feature in specific detail. So I'll probably start writing about 9.0 features soon. Um, so as far as 9.0 things that aren't exactly related to just economy, are we planning on anything else in that update? We're still kind of working it out. I know. I, you probably have a lot, a lot of stuff you want to do on skills still. Oh yeah, skills is definitely going to get some upgrades there. Yeah, so I think just continued balancing, continued performance yeah. optimizations. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and the full feature set will be, be worked out over time. Um, but yeah, there's a lot more to come. And we also have a lot more biome stuff we want to get in, like uh, insects and invertebrates is a big one. So we have uh, a couple of those, like we have uh, 
uh, butterflies, and we want to add more things like that that function as like an indicator of the ecosystem's health. So if you're seeing a lot of these creatures around, you know, it tells you something about the ecosystem. If they're not there, then that's something else. So another way to like understand what's happening in there. Uh, also sound is going to get a big uh, update too. We're going to bring on a new sound designer and uh, start building the audio experiences so that you really have this feeling of being in nature or being in a village, being in society. Uh, so that's the kind of thing that like you don't really notice until it's there, but it makes a massive impact just creating that ambience. All right, should we answer some questions? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, so we're going to answer the questions that came to us through Discord first, and then we'll go through all the ones I've noted from the chat. So if you guys have questions, just feel free to write them in chat, and hopefully we'll get to them. Uh, so the first question is, will it be possible to die in the future? For example, bad nutrition, falling from a high place, getting attacked by a wolf horde, or taking an asteroid in the face. <laughs> right. You're pretty much immortal right now. Um... I think I would like to do that. I think that would be a good addition, but in a way that makes sense for the game. Uh, and that means that it has some kind of collaborative application. So I really like the idea of like illnesses or doctors or injuries so that, you know, if you get injured, there's some specialty that can help you, right? So you can become healthier with the addition of like doctors or, or professions that are focused in that. Um, so yeah, it's not in the immediate timetable, but that is something long term I think would be great. Yeah, I don't really think like, we talked before about like having calorie damage, I mean this is sort of in the game already in terms of that one mushroom, mm -hmm. um, and like as far as falling damage that's like, an, I mean even diving, right, if you stay underwater too long you lose your calories. Yeah. Um, and I do you think the health system being expanded could totally lead to something, like in this vein. Uh, mm -hmm. But I feel like when people ask this question, a lot of times they're talking, well, actually this question specifically is worded not this way, but a lot of times when this is brought up, people want to shoot each other with bows. I feel <laughs> yeah. like that's not really... Battle Royale. <laughs> yeah, battle Royale. <laughs> battle Royale. <laughs> okay, all right, our second question is, are we going to update the mod kit for water pipes? And I think the answer to that is just yes in 9.0. Yeah, so that um, would be the ability for objects to use them. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely something I would love yeah. to have people make more use of. Yeah, especially because it's going to be a more integral part of the game, especially later on in the game. Uh, people make mods for all sorts of stuff, some pretty cool stuff, and mm -hmm. having them be able to like integrate into this pretty crucial system seems mm -hmm. is pretty important. And just in general, mods are a huge focus of our long-term goals for this game, as we want it to, you know, someone could do a total conversion on this and make it really interesting, different type of game. Uh, I think that's really going to help with just with the, like, you know, 10 years out, longevity of this game and like future games that we do, having that ability to really get in there and change stuff. Okay. Um, question about water. Realistic water physics. <laughs> that <laughs> one's like a hard a, one. That's like our last game, Vessel. <laughs> yeah. I already did that, but uh, it's a much different situation in, in yeah. Eco. We have kind of like very basic water physics where it'll flow a little bit. Uh, the trick is to like, get something realistic that doesn't just kill your performance. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I think in ways that it contributes to the, the core pillars of the game, like sewage is a good example of how we're using water. You know, rather than having water that flows in an interesting way, like you have this collaborative project, and that's really the focus. So we'll probably continue in that direction. I could see us upgrading water, making it just behave nicer in general, though. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what people really want, though. It just, like, it doesn't need to be, like... Perfect, like, yeah. <laughs> blowing water, right? But it, it behaves in a predictable way that, like, they can kind of control, especially when they're doing these work projects, right? They want to be able to, like, mm -hmm. make sure the water doesn't just, like, get <laughs> impossible right. to work with. And but plus, yeah. we'll have, like, fresh water, salt water, and polluted water will have kind of different effects. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, like, the different liquid types are going to... Yeah. Right now, you can use them interchangeably, but in the future, you'll need to pay attention to that. So if you pollute your water supply, for example, that could be a big problem. Um, so next question about the skills UI. So we are making changes to the skill UI, um, just kind of continual improvements. Um, yeah. And we, we added this uh, this new thing. Oh yeah, yeah, we have the the new uh, specialty yeah. tracker for oh, you can track your EXP. Um, see a little bit better. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. So this is your specialties that you have now, and you can see. Uh, 
the different XP that it goes. So for example, if I chop down a tree. Oh, you're already max level, so. Oh, okay. Wow. One shot of this guy. You can see that my skills didn't go up. Why? Because I didn't have the right specialty. <laughs> <You know> specialty. <laughs> <laughs> that should tell you why. Um, and if you take that specialty, then you'll start earning skills. Yeah. So just it's a way to like understand the system better for people who aren't familiar with it, and also be a nice little tracker. Uh, and if you don't like it, you can turn it off too. So it's really just a, a nice little display that that shows the, the extra complexity in the system. Yeah. Uh, so somebody just sorry this sort of follow up to the water thing that we were talking about. Uh, somebody mentioned like sewage liquid, and that is something we want to have. Like eventually, we want to be able to have like sewage pools in the world, right? Yeah. Rather than because right now, right, it just kind of goes into the pollution layer. Right. It kind of disappears, but ideally, it would turn into like sewage liquid, and then you could have sewage ponds, and you could like yeah. spill that into your river, and it would like. Yeah, be that's bad. Really cool. <laughs> that's that's kind of what we're that's what we would like to move. Especially towards. with like other liquids like oil. Oh yeah, yes, oil like oil spills would be cool. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of that can be done within the whole like liquids thing. Mm -hmm. uh, requires a little bit of change, but yeah. You know. Exactly. All right. So the next question is: Are there any plans to expand the gameplay or just duration of it? Um, this is sort of like after they complete the meteor. Right now, it's it's a little bit awkward because different people play different amounts. They complete the game at different rates. But generally, this is actually another person asked this question about like getting kind of like the coolest tools, right? Kind of just before you defeat the meteor. So mm -hmm. like you kind of want more time to play with them. Yeah. Um, I know in the past we've talked about maybe having other disasters. Uh, I know that's not even close to like the yeah. immediate future. It's just a um, future kind of feature. Yeah. But it is definitely something that we're going to add. Um, and we actually have some prototypes and some things we've been working on for that. It's still far future. But you can expect that like the meteor won't be the end of the game in the final version. We'll have other stuff, which we're kind of not talking about yet. But uh, yeah, you might be able to, to get some ideas of that direction that's going to go. Um, so it should be pretty exciting. And as far as just for like the length of the game in terms of balancing, um, there's a lot of variables we can play with and that we kind of have to because of like the varying amount of players and the varying amount of time commitments and the amount of each individual do. Some people it takes too long to complete any task. Some people do it in like a day. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, there's a lot of tweaking to be done there for sure. And that's something we're going to continue on into 9.0 with. I also think that like, even if there's, once you've destroyed the meteor, there's a lot of just interesting effects you can get from running this society. Like you can make the economy itself, building the economy itself or researching. So there's all kinds of like, you know, things that can be interesting without a threat even, which I'd like to expand. Okay, so the last question is about mining. Um, it's sort of about basalt and just like the, kind of the difficulty of mining in 8.0. So in 8.0, just for those of you who haven't played it, uh, we introduced a tier system for pickaxes and it's kind of the first strict so tier system we had for uh, any of the tools and it's sort of like a test run to see if this is the direction we want to go um, and it introduced some problems in certain areas of the game uh, so at least for 8.6 we have changed it slightly to where the rocks can be destroyed they just have health similar to kind of how you would do trees how you cut down trees um, the rocks will now be more difficult to destroy with a weaker pickaxe so if you try and mine basalt with your stone pickaxe, it's going to be extremely difficult. You're going to use a lot of calories. It's going to slow you down a lot. So um, this sort of avoids the problem of people getting locked out of being able to do anything. Uh, you can now kind of settle in a place where you only have access to basalt and still do your stone working. It's just very difficult. Um, it also allows you, like, if you happen to need to, like, car like, if you wanted to build a house, like, right here, and this stone was in your way, you could at least get rid of it now. Um, so yeah, that's sort of where we're heading in that direction. Um, I don't think that we can count out having these tier lock things for good. I think it might come back. But for mm -hmm. now, this is the direction we've chosen to go to see how this plays out as well. We also talked about having like some of the resources you can't harvest until later. Like maybe oh, yeah, yeah. the big redwoods you can't chop down on the first day, right? Yeah. Like you have to build yeah. tools up to that. For sure. And I think that will more likely come into play soon. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, at least with the tier system, we proved that it can it can definitely work. Um, we just need to be 
careful about how we implement it. Mm -hmm. um, so a couple people asked about trains. <laughs> I know trains are pretty popular among people. Ask yeah, about it a lot. Uh, definitely want to have trains in the game. Yeah, uh, that's that's one of our our long term features. But you know, it's, it's, the thing about eco is like we can keep adding fidelity and more depth to the simulation forever. Like as long as the game has a supportive community, we're going to keep developing it. So trains are definitely something I would love to see in the game. I think it goes great with the transportation. Uh, mechanic we have, which is a huge part of the game, so it makes sense to kind of level up your transportation up to trains, being a huge one. So yeah, it's not not on the radar yet, but it is something in our future. Okay, and somebody had a question about fish recipes, which just in cooking in general, um, fish are a little bit underused. They're definitely going to get more Shop recipes. And just in general, uh, a lot of the cooking is going to get an update, uh, especially at, with biomes where we added so many new ingredients. Um, there's just a lot of new things that need to be utilized, and hopefully, it should have, have you like farming all the different kinds of resources, not just wheat and uh, grasslands. Yeah, we've been talking about adding that uh, crafting tag system. Yeah, yeah. How would um, that work? So, tag crafting is sort of this idea that instead of all of our recipes taking very specific ingredients like you know if you played 8.0 you know that now we have a recipe that breaks the stone down into generic stone and this was done because we didn't want to introduce massive recipe bloat when we added these different rock types so the idea behind tag crafting is that you could then instead of recipes taking the specific items they would take tags so to make a stone chair it would require like hard stone which that would be basalt or something like that but it would exclude something like shale and that way we can, you know, keep the recipe list pretty small, um, but still allow you to have like these different resources that can be used for different things and uh, kind of flesh out the world that way. It would help a lot with cooking, especially because if anyone's cooked a lot in the game, they know that there's recipes that all require like extremely specific things when they could be a little bit more generic. Mm -hmm. We have like four different recipes for some of the salads. <laughs> like, uh, that's just sort of how it goes. Yep. Um, and hopefully when that comes in, we'll also be able to sort of differentiate like the tree types and stuff. Like really what the stone showed us is that we do need a system like this if we want to kind of expand like this. And we really do to kind of make the world more unique in different areas. Mm -hmm. It lets you have like, you know, luxury materials that will still work for the basic stuff, but yeah. you can create something really cool with them too. For sure. We should go chop down a big redwood. Okay, that's gonna take a while. <laughs> uh, Even at max skill, it is. Uh, they have a lot of life. I can do it with the chainsaw in seconds, but the chainsaw is kind of loud. Um, find one first. So what about animal husbandry? I know that's something else that's like pretty far in the future, yeah. but that is something we, we're interested in adding to. Either, yeah, right? like that's, going that's, on the whole like, oh yeah, we have a lot we want right. to add. Uh, it's just sort of that's in the trains. Trains yeah. update, animal husbandry update will be two big content drops that we'll do at some point. Maybe post 1.0, we'll see. But um, yeah, that's another, you know, it's just so critical to human society and growth of civilization, so something great to include. Um, somebody mentioned bigger mining machines. Um, I don't know if we have any more plans to add those sorts of things. I soon. always wanted to add that giant, like, grinder thing. Oh, yeah, like those the huge, like, it has, like, buckets on a wheel. Yeah, like, yeah those things are crazy looking. It's like 100, 200 meters high or something. Uh, yeah, that's something that would be cool to add. Someone should mod that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somebody yeah. modded that. But. Um, and yeah, as far as linking directly to a stockpile, you can drop from oh, like the seed stew and stuff directly into a stockpile. Uh, there goes the big redwood. This thing's give so much wood. Yeah, it's like several <laughs> houses. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, more building shapes, sort of improvements to construction. I know Keegan really does, is interested in working on builders. We have a lot of like, we're getting a lot of new materials basically, like building materials, especially with eight you saw are the introduction of sort of, or I guess the split really of the mortared stone into its different types, um, which gives you a little bit more freedom in terms of the, like the color of your building, sort of what it looks like, despite them all being in the same tier. Um, and I think uh, it, as we sort of flesh out the world and we make these sort of different resources, like the trees can have different resources and we can have like sort of what happened to rocks happen to trees where we have like 
different wood types, different stuff like that, where people sort of, you can customize your building in that way. Mm -hmm. We have the system for the hammer set up too, so yeah. it's pretty easy to add like new forms in there. So yeah. we can just add a ton of new content. One of the things I want to do for 9.0 is add like very stately looking buildings. So we have like marble <laughs> columns and yeah. you know something, so you can build something that looks like a capital and it has all your like government facilities in there. Uh, I think that'll be a huge part of the game too. Getting a lot of wood from here. Mm, yeah. So one of the last questions I saw was about shrinking animal populations, which is that's something we're sort of trying to address. Um, right now it's, it, it's basically an issue with world generation uh, and how the game tries to predict what the animal populations should be and what they end up actually being in the game. Um, that's something that we're looking forward to fix, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's pretty much it. We, it is an issue. Um, your animal population shouldn't die out completely, and if that's the case, uh, you should probably open a bug. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they will shrink because of because essentially the game thinks that there should be more, but there can't. We're also putting a lot of new animations in for the next uh, next. Oh yeah, there's updates. gonna be a lot of animal behavior updates. Yeah, behavior yeah. updates. They're just gonna look a lot better in general. Um, they should behave better too. And it's... Mm -hmm. And we'll add pets at some point. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, we're pretty much right on time to end, so yeah. if you have any anything you want to talk about before we, we close up? Uh, I think that's good. So we got a blog coming out today, um, so Friday, watch for those, we'll mail those out. And uh, yeah, we got some, some more big updates that are going to be coming soon. Next week I'll probably do a blog about the future of eco and where we want to take it and our whole like education angle too. So look forward to that. And 8.1. That's going to be a, a big performance boost. So, yeah, lots of cool stuff coming. Yep. Great. Yeah, thank you guys cool. for tuning in. Yeah, thanks for joining us. See you next time. And always message us on Discord. Goodbye. Right. Bye, guys. Bye.